Hello everyone. Hope everybody's doing well. I know it's been, uh, I think, January the 20th since I uploaded my last video, but uh, <laughs> things has really been uh, difficult here lately. Uh, a lot of changes going on at work. Um, we lost my supervisor, and then we lost our manager. So, my department is pretty much running by itself. <laughs> so, I've been spending a lot of time uh, doing my supervisor's work and trying to get that done. I think it's about got the best of me. I've spent the past three days in bed. I have a terrible head cold. So, y'all please bear with me. We'll try to get through this video. I'll probably have to edit out a lot of sneezing. And uh, the cough is about gone, but the uh, sinuses are still working on me a little bit. I have uh, another doctor's appointment come Monday, so maybe things will be better by then. We'll just see. But uh, I figured today what I wanted to do was uh, go ahead and make this interconnect cable for the uh, Kenwood Twins and you can go online and find this uh, diagram I'll leave a link down below but you know we've got our connector covers our connectors I've got four pieces of uh, RG174 this is 50 ohm coax and some uh, random wire and there's actually four shielded cables go inside RG174 work great for that so won't be no problems at all on that so I just wanted to uh, go ahead and put this together haven't seen no video online about these cables we know these uh, I think they're pronounced Hiroshi connectors are a bit hard to find you can pick them up here and there from time to time uh, just depending on who has it in stock now I did hear someone say that they have removed their connectors from their units and put in DB29 female chassis connectors and use DB25 uh, connectors instead of these I guess that would be fine you know but I like to try to keep things as original but if it gets to where these things cannot be found then that is an alternative is using uh, DB25 connectors but before we get into this I wanted to look at a few other things that people has asked and uh, we'll cover some of that now in my last video uh, video number 199 where we looked at the uh, HP 851B and 8551B spectrum analyzer I had used this new camera and a couple people had commented that the uh, video was at 360p well that isn't a problem with the camera or with any of my editing stuff that is YouTube as you can see now the video is at 1080p so that is a, a YouTube problem um, and it seems to, I've, I've noticed that several videos I upload They'll show at 360p and then a couple hours later it'll switch to 1080p. So yeah, that is a YouTube problem, not a, not a problem with the new camera. Now so far I've, I have shot quite a bit of footage with the new camera. Just haven't put the videos together yet. I've got some more of the uh, Kenwood 99 video uh, for the VFO repair. Still working on that. It'll probably be a while if I can get that up, and uh, I've also uh, have an Atlas 180 that I'm working on, so I got some video footage of that, and I went back and played it back. Everything looks good, so uh, yeah, that's not a uh, a problem with the camera. Now, I love the camera. I'm you know still getting used to it. Uh, one thing I did find is that this camera is an older camera. It is a uh, was actually uh, by looking at some of the footage that was already recorded on the camera this camera was sitting in a store for about two and a half years 
and uh, then sold as a new camera. So that was some footage dating back a few years ago. And the battery is not taking a charge. You can charge the battery up and it'll last about 15 minutes. But other than that, no problems whatsoever with the camera. It seems to be doing a good job. Now, I'm going to go online and go ahead and order a couple of uh, extra um, capacity batteries and a external charger for this camera and everything should be good. I don't have no problem. This one came with a very nice long power cable so I can plug it right into AC mains and uh, got plenty of room to move the camera around and, and the way it's designed it doesn't uh, pull tight or pull on the connector so yeah that works pretty good. In one of my other videos, we looked at this little capacitor that a viewer had dropped off that uh, was in a package of new capacitors, and he tested it on his tester, similar to this one, and as you can see, it shows up as a diode, and the question was, is that a fake component, or is it just something uh, wrong with the... Uh, capacitor well I wanted to verify that because several people had asked about it and we'll verify it by using the curve tracer so here I have a 1N914 diode across the curve tracer and you can see the uh, waveform on the screen of the diode and then when it kicks down it has this little knee on it and you know that's the typical waveform for a uh, little diode. So if we take this uh, capacitor and put on the curve tracer you can see it shows basically a short. So that verifies that no that is not a fake capacitor. That is actually a capacitor that is shorted and it could be you know it was just the way when it was made something didn't go right they didn't check it and you know it shows up at the short this way on the color tracer you can be sure if the component is fake or if it's something actually wrong with it so no i'm gonna say that is not a fake capacitor that is actually a bad capacitor from the supplier Now, speaking of curve tracers, uh, Dino sent me this link to something that he found online. And this is the CSI 8410A transistor curve tracer, and it's at $543.15. Now, I have never seen this model. And, you know, I always encourage to build, up, build your own equipment and building the curve tracer is not that hard to do there's plenty of schematics online for it I just happened to build one that uh, Paul Carson over at Mr. Carson's lab designed if you're interested in that you'll need to uh, join in on his patreon page and you can get the uh, circuit from there but this thing you know that Dino found looks so much like the uh, old tech 576 curve tracer but this kind of has the uh, timber look and feel to it so I'm not sure just who is uh, producing this thing but you know there you are if you want to buy yourself a curve tracer uh, that is one <laughs> and uh, the thing is I can't find very little information on this piece of equipment I've looked for YouTube videos and I've googled it and not really finding a whole lot on it it would be interesting to to see just how well this thing is put together maybe one day I'll have to uh, see if I can pick one up and give it a try but it's uh, from circuit specialist and uh, again there's not a whole lot on the internet at all about it but you see it's a you know not a bad looking built unit 
It comes with some accessories. But it looks so much like the old tech curve tracer. It would be uh, very interesting to, just to see how well this thing does work. Anyway, I'll leave a link down below if you'd like to check it out. So if we look here at our schematic of our interconnect cable, you can see on here that we have four shielded cables. There's one here, 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 and here. And you can see that the shields tie to various different pins on the connectors. And we also have a uh, one coming on pin 12 that is actually goes to amplifier control circuit and I've already got all the uh, shielded cables made up as you can see and I color coded each one of them and as you can see I also have the ground wire coming off the side so we can run them where they're supposed to go and the way I did that was just by taking the shield and bending it over and sorting the tag lead to it and then covering it with heat shrink and that should make for a clean looking connector when it's uh, put together now I went with uh, SMA for the amplifier control I will not be running no amplifier with this radio I didn't want just an RCA plug hanging off the back you know we can go and get something shorted out so uh, this one the center conductor is set back up in the uh, plug so we don't have to worry about that center conductor really touching anything and you know SMA is the uh, way to go on some of these things so I figured I would uh, incorporate on this cable itself So I'm going to go ahead and start at pin 1. I'm going to go ahead and put one of these uh, shielded cables on. I'm not even going to uh, record soldering the cables on, but as we see pin 1 is a uh, shielded cable that goes right on through to the receiver connector to pin 1. So I'm going to go ahead and get all the uh, shielded cables installed. Okay, I got all four shielded cables soldered on, and uh, if we look here, we can see the shield around the cable on pin 1, goes to pin 9. Also, pin 10 cable shield will go to pin 9, and amplifier control shield will go to pin 9. Pin 9 is also a straight through cable, so we're going to add a black wire to pin 9 and we're going to take the uh, ground tags for 1 and 10 and solder all of them to pin 9 okay we got all of those on and uh, as you can see I got amplifier control cable goes to pin 12 and shield goes to pin 9 along with its straight through cable now before you put the other ends on you will have to put your cable housings on because of the uh, hole this doesn't open up cable housing comes apart but you got to run your wires through both of them first now the uh, SMA cable will not fit through here but you can take this little string relief off and uh, it'll slide right through the hole so we can go ahead and get that on and uh, get that finished up next is uh, for pin 8 and pin 15 shielded cables will go to pin 16 and then another straight cable will go through I've also color coded the two black wires one solid black one with yellow dots on the end that helps you know tell them apart when you go to uh, solder in the other side 
Well, as you can see, that's quite a bit of wires in that one connector. Um, the only thing left to do now is uh, we've got to run a wire from, I think it's pin 8 down to ground on pin 16. So it's a little short wire there we got to install. So the transmitter side of the uh, cable is completely done and so that you just caught my error yes uh, this loop ground wire is pin 7 not pin 8 it goes from pin 7 down to pin 16 so yeah I just want to make that correction but this end is done I can now go ahead and put the uh, both cables in do the other side the same way which is completely identical it just doesn't have the uh, amplifier control wire so everything is you know completely straight through so I'm going to get that done now and uh, we'll have that finished up and there we are our cable is now complete this is the uh, transmitter in and that's the receiver end. Now we'll uh, print out some labels to go on both sides, transmit, receiver. But the thing is, does it work? Well, let's find out. Uh, Alpha Tango, please go back. Okay, well our uh, interconnect cable works fine business, uh, no problems at all. Um, was on one of the cable I didn't mention, and that's the uh, cable that goes from the antenna port on the back of the receiver to the antenna port, which is an RCA connector on the back of the transmitter, and it ties the uh, receiver to the antenna. So you have to have a PL259 to RCA to connect the antenna line. So no problem with that. And also, when we go to transmit, you see the receiver mutes. So no problems at all. And one thing you know that's good about it, you have your crystal calibrator here. But you also have this cow function here. So if I turn the volume up, flip this over to cow. That's how you zero beat the uh, transmitter and receiver together. Now, if you noticed, uh, I told you there was a problem in the transmitter VFO. The receiver is doing the same thing now. Now you know before we had to do very little to the receiver, the receiver worked great, but uh, there is a problem with the VFO also, and it seems to be the same issue that the transmitter has. I put it on calibrate. Kind of hard to tell it then it doesn't do it all the time but the vfo on the receiver is given a wobbling effect which means that the grease is dried out and the uh, rotor is not making good ground so it's losing its vfo signal and uh, we'll have to also tear in it and uh, clean that and do some maintenance on it and I've also found while I was working on the transmitter I found a couple of bad caps in the circuit that's going to have to be replaced so I think you know as old as this radio is they did use good quality caps but we're going to have to recap both units um, no need to play around with it 
we'll just go ahead and get the cap sold and go ahead and get that done. You see the uh, tone kept changing while I was trying to uh, tune that station in so it shows that the uh, VFO does have that issue. Got a little AM activity on 80 meters, uh, not the best signal, but uh, it's copyable. Uh, a lot of noise in here tonight, just to show you. Uh, you can see when I turn the noise blanker off, not the static. W1AW for the AM rider. Okay guys, that's going to wrap up this short little video. As uh, you can see, uh, building this uh, internet cable is uh, no problems at all. I'll leave a link down below to this schematic if you need to uh, build one of these cables. I also have a link for those connectors if you're looking for them. And as you can see, we still got a lot more work to do on this uh, set of Kenwood twins so I saw no problem with the receiver to start with but now uh, the VFO is acting up on it I'm going to go ahead and get some uh, capacitor kits ordered for both units and uh, we'll go through it and get it recapped do a complete alignment on it and uh, we'll get this thing moved in the house and see if can't we work some AM with it that's one thing I'm interested in doing with this rig is trying some uh, AM still looking for a FL 101 by Yezu I did find one had a digital display and I did not want the digital display I want the analog display that will match both of my FR 101's anyway I uh, hope you found this useful you can let me know by giving me a thumbs up leave your comments down below I will uh, be doing some more stuff in the future on this radio and doing some more stuff on Patreon. I appreciate all the supporters and all my Patreon supporters and we'll see you in the next video. Bye now.